starting on time, but we may as well. Um, I'm just going to start out with introductions to our digital, digital collaboration workshop here. I do want to introduce myself and my work and want to see what you guys are interested in, uh, where your fields are, because as I've been working um, in this, so let me be quick, I'll introduce myself like this. I'm Gina Larson. I am a electronic literature writer, lover um, that's been my life since I started my master's thesis in 1991 and interviewed every single person in the field, all eight of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I have grown with the field, and then I retired um, August 1st of 2022, and I joined Wikipedia August 16th of 2022. <laughs> I gave myself a two-week break. Um, I've been trying to work on electronic literature in Wikipedia ever since. And we come up with what um, we can talk about. And then as I've been going through this, I realized, yeah, I know what? Our group is not the only one with these problems. So that's why this time, last year, I did a uh, with uh, editathon, which really helped for, uh, for us. And we got together with sister groups like Women in Religion and Women in the News, and we really came up with ways we can do this. So last year I did an editathon, and this year I'm like, let's just talk about it. But for a moment, simply because I have my slides up I, and I have the floor, I wanted to introduce our major project, which is Women Electronic Literature Writers in Wikipedia. And basically, we face a number of challenges, which I think we all do in electronic art, literature, um, Native American, whatever we've got. Uh, electronic literature is literature that uses text, but also images, sound, navigation, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, as an integral part of the work. So if you can print it out in a book and have the same reading experience, it is not electronic literature. Uh, so we have new art, we have rapid changes in obsolescence. 75% uh, of my work is dead. It is gone. Um, so, ah, where was I? Sorry about that. I want to go back for a moment. I don't want to annotate. I want to go back, but I can't. Sure. So, electronic books. So, um, if you have open open access and it's available online, is that electronic No, <laughs> because you could print it out. Um, if you have an ebook that is in the same format as a print book and you would get basically the same experience, only you read it from the screen versus reading from the screen. Even though that's ancient, like people yeah. hardly access that. Yeah, that's basically that's ebook and that's wonderful and it's e publishing. Elit is a little different in that. In order to get the meaning, you have to traverse the work. You have to go in different orders, or you have to use images, or you have to have sound in order to get the whole meaning. Like, for example, one of my works, Disappearing Ray, is a mystery novel. Depending on which way you enter it, somebody else dies. Somebody else does something. Um, the work that I just did is um, Are You There Yet? And when you open it, you get a, with randomly assigned to you're actually talking to an AI, or you're talking to Lord Krishna, or you're talking to Lord Krishna's cons cons um, consort. What if we start putting the links into our our books? If the links mean something, yeah, then it's secret. Mm -hmm. But they have to add a semantic level, right? So if we if, if there was something in there and then we said. And go to this link and have this experience yeah. off site. Uh, uh, or, yes, sort of. an, or an experience uh, of this person's art. Yeah. To a degree, that's getting to Elit, and that's another problem is it's a new form. Is that Elit? And then we can have this argument of, we have this argument all the time on Wikipedia. Is this Elit? So, yeah, that's a good question. So, that's one of the problems is it's a new art form. How do we define it? And believe me, the electronic literature organization spent six years trying to define what we do. So, yeah, could 
see the problems. Um, I'm just trying to see where we're at. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. So we've got new forms, we've got rapid changes in technology and non-traditional. And yeah, it's all sorts of stuff. Um, we do rely on this, but we've got coding, we've got games, we've got sound, and we've got new artistic forms. This is a problem because we have pages on interactive fiction. Is interactive fiction electronic literature? So yeah, categorization, massive mess. And I'm saying that that's a problem in electronic art. Is it AI art? Is it electronic art? Is it, if you took a picture of Mona Lisa and you drew a mustache and you had that as an image, is that electronic art? I don't know, it's a problem. I have no idea what, how to categorize this stuff. That's a problem on Wikipedia because we have keywords, we have categorizations. Electronic stuff, I'm saying digital stuff, I'm, not only is this a problem for electronic literature, I think it's a problem, and this is what I wanted to know, is this a problem for other fields? Because I have a feeling it is. Um, I think it is. I really do think so, but I don't know. I'm, not, I'm an electronic literature writer. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, exactly. And so citations are a problem. Rapid tech is a problem. Um, like I said, 75% of my work, gone. Flash, Twitter, Hypercard, I wrote in all of those. You cannot access my works anymore. Gee, too bad. Uh, there's a few that you can. I've written 50, and I think you can access 15, 20, something like that. You just say you can't save hard copies because it's not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, you, you can, you, um, we have emulations, we have them. I didn't mean hard copies, I said your own. Oh, yeah, I have 250 Mac classics. And so you have those in something. Mac, I have, the Smithsonian actually owns now, because I gave it to them, 10 of my Mac classics that work. Huh. And they will run it once. So you might be, the Library of Congress has 12 of my Mac classics. They might run Marvel, Marvel Springs once a decade. The last time they ran Marvel Springs that anybody could see was like 2013 or something. So yeah, it's a problem. Um, we have the next museum, which has 3,000 works. Yeah. We have, we have emulations, we have path builders. So we are in our field trying to get these, but yeah, so many works are gone. Um, and most authors are self-published because there's non-traditional, because if you're doing these journals, like for electronic art or whatever, there's no money. Um, if you're with the IRS, I get paid, no. <laughs> um, I got paid something like $150 and I wrote off, you know. <laughs> but um, there's no money in the field. So we don't have the New York Times. We have a blog that Leonardo Flores, who's a professor um, in Appalachian State University, runs, but it's on a blog. It's on WordPress. And if it's if Leonardo says it's good, it's good. I love you poetry, it's great. It's a WordPress, it is not notable. What the hell is gonna be notable in a field that's new, changing, and our reviews are on blogs. Goodreads has a lot of our reviews. Well, Goodreads, there's a there's a bot out there that will delete everything that you ever edited if you include a Goodreads URL. So how do we deal with our notability problem? Um, and then, of course, for us, we throw in the women problem, which we're all aware of. <laughs> and uh, Basically, before I started this project, we had two women electronic literature authors um, featured. Um, we had Judy and Stephanie, Judy Malloy and Stephanie Strickland. Uh, because of this project, we now have 40 in two years. So we are doing quite a bit. Uh, we do have a lot of content folks, but <laughs> this is still an issue. Um, and so these are the things that we're doing. Uh, we are populate. We'd love to. Um, here. 
Oh, another problem is we've had people who have written on Twitter. There's a lovely Twitter bot. Uh, there's many Twitter bots that are dead now. Um, we had one guy writing a novel, and he had started in when Twitter started, like 2008. 140 characters a day, and it's a novel. And he goes back to others, but you can't do that anymore because you can't do the back and forth anymore. We had Kickstarter novels. Um, we have Flash, F Cobalt, uh, C, HTML5, uh, Twine is another one that we're using now. We have all these softwares that are going to be dead in two years. So it's a problem. But what we are doing for the electronic literature folks is sharing my screen, trying to get that out of the way. Okay. Um, we have, and if you haven't gotten one of my wonderful little cards, if I haven't come up here and gotten, here, have a card, have a card. Everybody has one. Okay. Um, we have it's like it is an art, it's ephemeral, but it's still an important thing. It's it's a flash of performances, but it's important for that. So we um it's not control. Right. We're doing conferences. Um I do a lot of edit thons at every one of our conferences. Um they get tired of that and they just say Dean is already doing it. So they I don't even have to submit anymore, they just put in a placeholder for me, which is nice. Um we did like I've been at Wikipedia conferences, we do the monthly Zoom. Uh, we are we now have Elmsif as an authoritative control. Yes, Elmsif is our electronic literature database that does categorize our works by person, title, description, URL. Um, we, we're writing articles and we're drafting documents. Um, our draft, I can show that, but our draft document, yeah, this is how you can help us out, <laughs> give presentations. Oh, and we did wiki, I did wiki education, and I am now, because I was an artist in residence last year um, at Washington State University, and now I'm like on call for other universities to, to help them with their wiki ed, and we got 22 articles about um, electronic literature works published out of a class of 24, so. We did good. So we're doing good. Um, come to our meetings, partner with us, inform our draft document, get your students involved. One of the wonderful things, and you can write this URL down, um, that we learned from the women in religion is women in religion have this wonderful partnership and they publish biographies about women and then they use that as a secondary source for Wikipedia, which is way sweet. It's way sweet. Um, we're doing the same thing. And did you know that Google Docs only goes to 1 million characters? We did not know that. We are now up to five Google Docs, each of which is kind of getting to that character level. <laughs> and what we're doing, if you go onto this URL and help us out, um, anytime you hear about a woman, um, electronic literature writer, we do have a few of the men now because and we put that information in our Google Doc. And then we draw from the Google Doc to write articles. You have multiple documents. Oh, that's what we did. Yeah, yeah. So if you go to this Google Doc, you'll see the linked Google Docs to it. Because we had to split it. We'll probably, like A through G right now, we'll probably end up splitting with A through D. <laughs> but that's what we're doing. Um, the problems that I found, and this is what I want to spend the rest of the time on and have you guys introduce yourselves, is this. These are the issues that we've found. There are probably others, but this goes for, I think, women in religion. I think it goes for other electronic arts, um, probably even for indigenous. If you're in a non-traditional field, do you run into these issues? How do you handle them? Um, for example, electronic literature, it's a small pot of knowledge. I've probably had dinner or lunch or brought into the field every single one of the 8,000 people that are there worldwide. Um, it's a pretty small pond, even with our 8,000 people and our 3,000 works. And we're all so pretty small. Um, ephemeral works, uh, how do we deal with this appearance software? 
How do we deal with sandpaper things? How do we deal with oral traditions, disappearing languages? Uh, what do we do? Non traditional. How do we deal with it when our major high pollutant review notability is a law on the WordPress or worse in the city? Right? Yeah. What do we do? Um, we have enthusiastic volunteers, and I have people coming to my monthly edit the thoughts and we're like, yeah, we really need this article. Oh my God, Marjorie Lissabrick, who is a major person in our field, just passed away last year. And everybody got together to do a memorial collaborative article. Well, we got slapped down with COI, we got slapped down with that's not notable, slapped down with all these other Wikipedia rules that we had somehow transgressed. And I lost a lot of volunteers. A lot of folks in my community are like, why would you buy it? This is ridiculous. If my edits don't stand. Um, and we had bot problems. The bot that I'm talking about for the, that we found out about the Goodreads, the bot comes in, destroys your edits. If you have a link to a URL for Goodreads, it will destroy your edits and it will not say anything in the comments. It will not say anything in talk. We had to like really research that one um, to find out what was going on. But why does it do that? I have no idea. There's a bot out there. And um, we, we contacted the owners of the bot and never heard back. Um, also, the new emerging technologies. A lot of our stuff right now, I know I have to say the words, <gasps> it's AI. A lot of what we're doing works on AI. A lot of what we're doing works in virtual reality, um, augmented reality. We even have a couple of people working on the quantum computers for a literary sense, which is kind of fun. So we're going to have these problems. If we solve them like, okay, you can have I love you poetry, but nothing more. Well, tomorrow, we're going to have something new. And then we're going to go through this argument all over again. So that's more or less my skill. <laughs> we wanted to hear what you guys' interests were in the field, what you think about this. Hopefully we have some folks on chat, or if there is anybody in the virtual, can we check? And check uh, questions. Yeah, check questions. Feel free to introduce yourselves. Yeah, well, um, I'm Annie. I'm primarily interested in Wikipedia uh, minority groups in Minnesota. And I'm uh, mostly interested in uh, Native Americans, like the Dakota, the Anishinaabe, Bigway, and um, Mon Americans. Um, but I, when I was in college, I studied new media, uh, which super overlaps with this, so I've seen quite a bit of it, and I haven't really edited in a category on Wikipedia, but it seems like something interesting to get into. Yeah. And so, uh, well, we're both uh, with women in religion, mm -hmm. and so some of the issues y'all are facing, I'm sure with indigenous people too, about notability, bots, coming in and taking things down and training people. Um, uh, and then, I mean, we are not even techno people. So keeping up with even the language in this Wikipedia conference feels a little hard. Um, and I'm, I am very concerned with some of their bot kind of reviews of things and the bias built into them, um, especially for marginalized communities. Yeah, I just put that on the AI talk yesterday. I was terrified <laughs> because it's like, oh, we're going to have us do a template and kind of style guide. Well, and this stuff doesn't fit that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, the categories are very Western and, mm -hmm. and it's just, uh, and it seems like they have a lot of discussions where they just don't change anything because they can't figure out what to do. <laughs> well, it's interesting to think of. Okay, so there is the all the rules, like notability issues, reliability, you go down. And so in our volumes that we publish, we look at those, each of those, we pick something. You know, some we have uh, 
sort of a theoretical or a, a historical chapter that will look for what, what you know what is the in the category of women in religion that were black in some sort of field. Uh, uh, historical, you could definitely take it a theoretical issue, and a lot, and most times it is from Wikipedia. And when we look at what the people in these biographies are doing and how they stretch the boundaries of notability, it's actually what we ask them to do, but also the people that are writing about in the career, how they stretch the boundaries of notability, or how they advocated for people, like you, like if there's a Wikipedia article about you, if somebody wrote a biography. If you were a woman religion and we were writing a biography about who's one of the parts of your biography would be how you worked to push at the boundaries of notability. And then we would talk about that. And then we would look at how that was applied in the um, chapters in the book and make the case that it theoretically in a chapter, which we haven't actually done this, but conceivably you could then take to an argument on Wikipedia. When they're having arguments about notability and is this person notable or not, you could say, well, you know, according to this peer reviewed, you know, article about this, community. and they're out there, not just us, they're all over. So, so they're, so what we have found most useful right, is to sort of put our heads down, look at what the notability issues, push at the boundaries of the notability issues and then do our work. And you know, we started the publishing thing. We're doing an AI project. And and the people in our group, like metrics, this is all driven by metrics mm -hmm. in, in Wikipedia, which is part of the problem. It's all metric driven. But our group, many people are retired. And so they're less metric driven and more activist driven. And how do we um, how do we create a space on Wikipedia that is more egalitarian, more open, um, more open to being decolonized? You know, all of those things. How do we do that? So we're not necessarily trying to edit, and we learn that even more in working with our opinion project. That there are just different value systems that don't that metrics aren't the deal. So we're just sort of working. We're doing our own thing. Right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, people go, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. You know? And so, you know, I don't know that at the end of the day, a little amount to end of the day. I, you know, I don't know. But, but in the meantime. But that's a good strategy to have both the publishing and the push at the same time and then look at the notability within that community. And to not have metrics be what drives us. Right. Yes. And okay. then be able to say, we like somewhere to somewhere today or tomorrow. I'm going to say because I've met some really nice people, um, who like and I think this is great. Started editing, you may even do it over there. Started editing when they were 10 or 14, and the 14 year old who is now like 30 mostly did review. So you got a 14 year old <laughs> reviewing our. Book. Uh, women in religion from a, from a marginalized category who knows nothing in the world about oppression and marginalization, probably not all that much about good citation and all, you know, and I'm going like, uh, why is this happening? You know, I mean, I am going to say something about that because you have a 14 rejecting articles of a person who is a leader in their field, you know, it would make sense to me if a 30 year old with experience in the field is going blah, 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 or at least experience in the field of Wikipedia with the, the, um, the, uh, ethics of these, um, suggestions, whatever they call, um, notability, reliability, their diet. Right. Anyway, <laughs> cool. I, I kind of wonder if there is a, a way groups like this could get together and push because they don't have, you know, they're talking about safe spaces and stuff, but they're, you know, everybody who's doing all the metrics and things, 
Yeah. They're not here with us. We were in a session yesterday with three women. I would just say if you have a session with three women, three men, four men, 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 what's going on? And then you have a There's not really much I can do. <laughs> no, you always type like the points. And you should get in your hand that room and your 30 guys and and three women walking. You should say to yourself, what is the problem mm -hmm. here? So the ways of pushing, I mean, our way of pushing is nice, but what do we do? Publish an essay every two more years, right? Uh, well, a year and a half. Let me summarize because we do have people um, who are having difficulty hearing. So I'm hoping they're hearing me now. Oh, okay. But we have folks online. Um, and if you put the chat back up, we can do that. But basically what we're saying is that we've got marginalized groups. Um, we have 14 year olds or people who don't know what the subjects are and don't know about oppression, reviewing these articles. And we've got difficulties with the minority folks. Um, but we also have other folks in the room and on the chat, please type in who you are and what your interests are in this in this field. Um, yeah. Um, Adam, username, Nick Number. I've been focusing on uploading images to Commons. Uh, I've been working with women in red and some translation from Spanish Wikipedia into English. Um, I did have a question. It seems like you're talking about a couple of things where the scope of an encyclopedia is more uh, documenting for instance, artists and their works on kind of a shallow level, but you're also talking about preserving works. And I was wondering if you've engaged with Internet Archive, because it seems like yeah, yeah. this may be a situation where each work may need a unique solution to <clears throat> back up or preserve well, we, the content. We, yes, for archiving, we love Internet ar Archiving. We love um, the Wayback Machine. We do have three initiatives within our electronic literature community, and I've actually written the articles on these. Uh, we have the Next Museum, which is the Next Museum, Preservation Space, um, and Library. They have resurrected 3,000 works, 21 collections. We did have some journals, um, Beehive, Trace, others, and they are working on this, the, the, the next museum is working on this, and they recreated those journals. That is Jeannie Grigar's work, and she basically gives her entire salary to that. Like about 75, she earns about 75,000 as, as a professor, and she spends about 80,000 on this, just on this, to train everyone. So it's, it's a personal labor of love. Um, Luckily, her husband works. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we do have archiving, and we are not asking Wikipedia to archive. Let me make that perfectly clear. What we are asking Wikipedia for is the space to do what Wikipedia says it's going to do, which is a shallow, objective introduction to a wider field. And we want that. But yeah, thank you for all your work with all of this. And if you guys want to chime in as well. And, and I, I just agree with her. There's just so many parallel problems with so many different projects and here with all these different you know, communities that don't have the um, the same kind of traditional you know Western uh, set of, of information sources that are considered you know. Um, you know, reputable or 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 of the sort to you know, to justify my ability to write it. It's just it's just a perpetual problem. And, um, I, I think there's like a, there's like a bigger sort of ideological sort of divide on Wikipedia about this. You know, the, the, I, I I refer to sort of the deletionist. Yes. That I think is is a humongous problem. Um, I. It, 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 you know, to this day, I mean, things, things that I that, that I created, you know, where the division was nominated for deletion, you know, um, but it's just, it's, it's, I think we just need to, we just need to make sure that we are one of those three women, right? Like, I, 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 I,
find it more to you know, consider the state right? You know, it's making sure that we care. Did I type it? It's it already Value. It should be a oh, there. They they don't oh, like this. Then yeah. they should be asking. Oh my God. Oh, you do have a lot of I'll just summarize for your 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 video yeah. out there. So anybody else on, on, online, we're just having a, a, a just a conversation about you know the problem of the weakness and um, how so many different communities are having the same problems of, of you know coming up with the uh, sources for justifying mobility, um, keeping keeping our content up there, getting more voices in the room. Um, just ask a little rascal question, just to try to say that way. Yeah, the bots and the deletionists. Like, don't let the bots and the deletionists get out of control. Um, for you guys on the live, we have limited this, unfortunately, to answers and questions, but if you just put your information in as a question, that might work. Okay. Oh, did you want to chime in as well? Hi, my name is Bella. I'm an archivist, so I'm kind of working in non notable materials mm -hmm. all the time. Um, so this is a, a conversation on generally interested in. Um, I'm all trying to integrate tribal materials into um, mm -hmm. more in wiki data and comments now. Um, that's kind of where I found it's easier to, to do things, but um, I like to keep it in both the media when I can, so I'm always looking for strategies of, of how to do that. And I really like the idea of like pushing for notability and seeing how far you can yeah, go. So but why, why are the, your materials not notable? I think oh, why are your materials not notable? But and let let me also. I want to follow up on the database stuff, but yeah, why are your materials not notable? Do you think? I mean, it's just everyday uh, problem to have. So like, they're they're like, they're primary sources. Yeah, yeah. 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 does not. There's a, that that gets challenged immediately. Just one example. I mean, pictures of. Well, I mean, we put pictures of people in that we don't have identified in you know, the comments. Um, and that's fine, you know, but like, how do you do more? Like, what more can you do with that? Or, um, and, and, like, if I may with Andy's, uh, primary sources would be letters from families, letters from indigenous sources, journals, and that isn't notable yeah. because it's a primary source. So that is a problem. So they asked for suggestions for um, sister projects. So like we should get that a six sister project, which I had to ask. That was I felt really stupid asking. But like with the data and all this stuff, but they want it would be fine. So maybe it sounds like what you're talking about is asking or wishing that that with the with media foundation had a place for storage of archival material that and it that so they don't get lost to history. Well, I mean, you know, we have our, our systems and stuff in universities and stuff, but it's just um, you know, how can we integrate it into the media? It's something I'm always uh, thinking about. Maybe that is a sister project. So we do, yeah. So the idea is to have a sister project with the primary materials. I think there was something about that with wiki source. But as you're saying, we have the primary data. It's getting it into the articles and letting that primary data speak for itself as a notable source. 
Um, I just wanted to say that something I've been doing in this room and other rooms is that it seems like people who are in minority subjects or like editors who are actual minorities oh. or, um, you know, they educate native Americans and modern Americans, they see a lot of good that um, actually shows them of Wikipedia. Like when you're talking about how a 14 year old um, rejecting an article um, based on Wikipedia standards. Um, and probably a pretty privileged person in Wikipedia is not privileged than over your article of um, a pretty unknown, you know, woman um, religious figure. Um, and so it kind of smells like some of this is a systemic issue. And it, I mean, including, you know, electronic literature. Um, I know that's a very well established field because I studied it in college. <laughs> so, you know, they're not going to, you know, you know, they're not going to have that stuff in college if it's not a pretty established field. And um, but you're still getting pushed back anyway, because I suppose it's not established enough or or the admins don't understand that it's a quickly changing and evolving field. Mm -hmm. Um, I find that a lot with admins when we try to get help uh with like Native American subjects, because there's a lot of prejudice against Native Americans on Wikipedia that Admins don't know anything about Native American people, so they don't understand why certain things are bigotry against them or prejudice against them, and they can't, they don't actually solve the problem because they're not aware of what the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be cool if a lot of the, if a lot of the users who edit in minority subjects or are minorities could like get together to sort of this is just an idea to get together to sort of like you know exchange ideas and like team up with each other and figure out how we can help each other and how we have similar different experiences because electronic literature not a person but minority a small subject um but it sounds like there's a lot of like minority people involved in it because it's sort of an outsider thing right now and women and religion you know all sorts of stuff probably even archives you know that involve you know smaller subjects or whatever so I want to actually go away in this in on that comment. The first off, I'm John Carlo, user complex rational. I am oh I am in fact an admin on Wikipedia and I'm also a member of Wikimedia in New York City. In response to that, I did want to weigh in that yes, I will agree there is a lot of systemic bias in the sense of what sources are have been extensively evaluated and are known to be reliable or unreliable. There is in fact a list that I'm aware of that every many people who review new pages will consult it's basically a list of sources from different regions that have been discussed and there's a consensus on their reliability. I I have noticed of course it is unfortunately weighed much more towards the more well-known media outlets that may not be as representative of minority topics. Fortunately, there are often discussions where editors may review a minority topic and evaluate a specific source as needed, but of course I will also say that such cases are best not left to one rogue admin and a rogue patroller to make a hasty judgment. What I'm looking for from this is like, can we get together and start like a minority community panel for groups that have non traditional needs and as you're saying, and, and be able to advocate. Um, one thing, two, two, two things that have come up I want to talk about in depth. One is database. We were able to, simply because I came to the Wikipedia conference last year and cried, and we had this wonderful guy named Keith Ray. He said, Ah, you guys have a database. You have Elmset. It is a curated database. We will make that authority control. We spent this last year, a lot, a lot of administration. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we do have authority control now for Elmset, which is great. Um, well, we need to have groups that have these uh, 
we need to identify these existing databases. That's where the archivist is entitled to it. What databases do we have? What's out there? Are there lists of saints? Are there lists of indigenous cultures? Are there lists of these things that we're interested in? Can we then find a way to get them through the admins and through the bureaucrats and through the lizards and through all this maze of stuff that we don't know about? I'm like a two year old, you know what I mean? 2000 edits and I know it. Admins don't actually have special weight. Actually, admins don't have special weight in whether a topic is noble or not. We're merely the ones that assess the consensus of other users okay. yes. and push the button at the end. But there must be a way for the Wikipedia bureaucracy to say, hey, can we have this? I understand case by case, but that case by case is pretty ominous when we've had so many different non traditional things going on. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to say the case by case is especially ominous when you're in a field that already has so much scrutiny for like either it not being known very well or like it's per it's subject to a lot of like bias and prejudice and racism in real life, where like for someone editing in a better known field, maybe they'll publish like an article a day. They're doing really good. But if you're doing like when I do native stuff, every single every single new art. <laughs> Every single new thing, big changes, all, you know, like in some way, usually challenged by something or other, because, you know, no one is familiar with the big sources or the field or the general history or like literally anything. So when you, when you do the minority editing, it's like two, three times more the work. Um, and I mean, I'm one of the few people that actually edits in some of the, some of the topics I'm in, like I edit specifically the Dakota. In Minnesota, I'm probably, I think I'm probably the only person on Wikipedia that does that. So it's just me. <laughs> it's just me that has to do all that stuff. And I know, I mean, for you, you have some folks to help you out, but you all have to, like five of you or so, have to fight that every time too. So there's a higher, higher energy burden on these for other, other times. And maybe it's a culture shift. So, so maybe it's a culture to shift. Maybe an admin isn't simply a person that goes, here's here's the list of um of approved things. That an admin is instead an advocate, you know, and looks at this and goes to themselves that you have a criteria, and that it isn't so much about how many about widgets, how many times you push. So back to the um the um Getting credit when anyway, well, it comes to me. But um, but that the economy becomes different and that we get credit for saying, you know, and I think there's a problem. And they push the problem up higher and say, and they're saying, I'm getting tired of having to reject. The it, every article I get on Native American studies or whatever because this doesn't seem right to me. That should be the job of an mm -hmm. That it isn't just simply enforcing rules that are already biased, biased because culture is biased. We we can't just reflect the bias of culture. Yes. So the typing in solutions, if somebody else wants to type them in, we'll do that. Of this is no thing, but, but not only the culture shift, is there any way we could have a new category or class of people called diplomats where we have a, people who are expert in the field? So, if you force someone, a 14 year old who doesn't know what's going on, who's clearly or who is indigenous or who is not literature, before they actually delete the article, it goes to a peer reviewed diplomat. To say, yeah, I know what this is. Yeah, that's legit. No, that's not legit. Is there a way that we can have diplomats going through the bureaucracy that we don't even know about um, to Wikipedia? So, first off, I want to again emphasize that any user, not necessarily an admin, is free to advocate for whatever they believe or whatever policy change they deem appropriate. Plenty of times, many, even just a thread of pop things can go a long way. But to more directly answer that question, 
one thing that I think might help, I don't know how in depth it is as things stand, could be basically for new page patrols and those that we do when we create the articles to maybe be a little bit more public about the area of the expertise or interest so that instead of just somebody writing through a backlog, like we can say, hey, you know about Native American history or even other topics like like electrical engineering or like language poetry. Language French poetry or Australian Aboriginal history. And that way whoever's reviewing the article has a better command of the sources, the more accurately the search, whether the sources are reliable and the topic is local. I think that would help a lot because we have a lot more publicity about the areas that we and I can get to most of the other um, We also have an issue is uh, talk about uh, electronic literature had your location, which was where in 2007, nine, um, we had a woman, Zoe Quinn, have a free game depression quest. She had an ex boyfriend who was abusive to the folks who accused her of sitting around for. Uh, review and what basically happened was as a result of all of this and a lot of that players from Wikipedia. This is all documented if you want to look at game gamer game Wikipedia that you want to talk about. Um they doxed uh women, they put their real address on there, they said things like this woman is known to be an adulterer, this woman is known to rape people, that they put in horrible things on Wikipedia on Wikipedia and they said that man. yes Yes, and it's those who are, those who have other their subjects having their added suppression possibly being blocked. Right? Yes. And so this is an issue where we don't even know where to go to. And there are these problems. If there were somebody in the Wikipedia universe who we could say, we're an expert in our field, and go to us. Rosie Stephanola is amazing. But she's one person. We need a we need a channel. Yeah, I can attest to next and uh, uh, editing the Native American area of uh, vitriol. Um, that faces obviously the Native American people that we as well for you know their <laughs> to want to bring them out and spotlight them and you know show their accomplishments and things. You get just like with Gamergate, um, this is something that apparently happens across Wikipedia for different things because it happens with Gamergate, it happens with Native people, you get this like organized cabal of like of Wikipedia users. I suppose in Wikipedia speak, this might be called POV pushing, mm -hmm. um, but you know, they organize to make sure that that um, they harass you for every act. You know, and when you say things they don't like or don't agree with, not based on sources, but based on their opinions and biases and prejudices. You know, they, they fight you on it for everything. Um, and they're they're organized, they're exhausted, their whole point is just like a game or game, is just to argue with you like you are exhausted and like you don't want to do it anymore. So you leave Wikipedia so that the topic they don't like is, you know, erased again. And you know, just like with her. I mean, that problem with me is still unresolved. You know, uh, I'm here today partially because I'm hoping I can get it addressed, but it's like, you know, it still happens to me all the time. Like, where do you go to? I've asked admins, I've asked ARCOM, all sorts of people, and they all say that's not our issue. But, like, if you're facing actual racism, misogyny, sexism on Wikipedia, how can you tell me that there's no there's no method to address this on Wikipedia? You know, you think that some source that's trying to present itself as being you know, reliable in some ways, you know, or on being something that I mean, the internet which often deals with these issues, you think it'd be easier or more apparent how you can get things addressed when they have to be with bias and prejudice. But not really. <laughs> it keeps going. And he wants to look too much. And I think that we just desperately need a channel to combat these things for the minority groups and to have that inclusivity to say, yeah, you may not know about Wikipedia, you may not know who the, the bureaucracy is, but there should be somebody who can help combat these things. I uh, feel like the, the I mean, certain 
dispel the extra labor that goes into being a modern guy trying to be fighting against uh, prejudice and biases. Um, but communicating with journalists should have done. I feel like uh, as a former journalist, um, if somebody sent me an email with all of the research already done, maybe two or three people which reached out to me to create an actual story, then you know, you basically did my job for me. And if it helps you uh, uh, also like cement, you know, uh, knowledge and create access to that, then presumably we're both fulfilling our personal mission and as a journalist, but a job for our and so I think that yes, you can go through various bureaucratic channels, but there's also um, an opportunity to reach out to people in the community um, and make those personal connections that will probably last for a long time. On this, if you look like an indigenous uh, reporter, then or a person who reports on indigenous affairs, then they're going to keep their eyes out and they're going to be future. Um, insights on any particular current events or um, how elements of the past or the knowledge base you might have on the nation. I think what a lot of uh, people who aren't journalists may not think is that, uh, or may not assume that may be challenging when reaching out to journalists, it's just uh, their job is to focus on, for the most part, most of them, focus on the time and now. Very uh, Yeah, and I think also the whole meetings and reference, um, reaching out to yeah. institutions, um, and maybe you know, in the long term, you can kind of structure how it might turn to a paying job for you um, working at an institution that can help verify the topics that you're working involved in. But again, I uh, I cannot express enough that I did not diminish the amount of labor that we still have to go through to validate ourselves and mm -hmm. supposedly for um, accepting open uh, space. Introduce yourself, too. Uh, my name is Colby Ari. Um, this is Fort Oklahoma. Um, former journalist. Uh, in fact, I'm currently by the whole submission. Five minute morning. Yeah. Morning. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have five minutes. And so, if you, Colby, if you put that around, I want to put in that solution. Here are the solutions we've come up with so far. And I think these will help. But basically, we could reach out to Wikimedia, Wikipedian, Wikipedians and residents, maybe like even in the Smithsonian or other places that may have this type of expertise. But we've got a culture shift. How we get that? How we oh, get that? Very direct. Very direct. Yes. So we were talking last night. Um, we work um, with a uh, one uh, really coming in with certainly concerned about communicability. Um, working together on the media. And we had an experience of we were working with a new editor and we put up an edit. Um, I mean we were doing it, an article and we're doing it in real time. Maybe we should call it <laughs> we're doing it in real time and in real time in that moment, did it get deleted? Uh, yeah. It got to be that two minutes. Yep, two minutes. Okay, you know, what? you know what would help is if there was a rule that said, unless it's vandalism, unless it's actual vandalism, that, that uh, the, the people, what is, what is called page patrol, page patrol people, cannot delete this one for a color. So those of us who are sitting, with new editors trying to work on articles that write in the train set. This is not just happened to us once. It happened to us multiple times, which means they're not just page control, they're trolling. 
I've got it's not problem. just painful. Oh, we have one, we you have know, one. and it is so discouraging that talking about emotional labor. Yep. What we have to do in the wake of that to get this person to stay and come back mm -hmm. is time consuming. Give us 24 hours. I'm not asking for a week. I'm not asking for a month. I'm asking for 24 hours. I think that's the critical one. Um, if we can get that rule, and if we can get we can keep in and and <laughs> Maybe they're in the main art space when they draft things. Really, they're they're they're. It was in the sandbox, and they were moving to um from the sandbox to publish the art. And we had some experienced people, so we held it together because they were saying this is. Promotional, you seem like you're paid. Mm -hmm. I do not think people who are not of color would have that problem. So I, we do have only two minutes left, but I think we've got a lot of stuff on the board. Hopefully, we can save this. I'll do at least a screenshot um, or a copy. And I think what we can do now is do a report back to folks, say, hey, here's what we've come up with, here's our pain points. Because if Thank you all for this because I thought I was the only one. But it looks like most minority groups or non traditional have a struggle. So thank you guys for coming to all of this, and we will continue this conversation. You have my information, so email me to do the best. So now all of you guys have my little sheet of paper. Do you have something? I did want to quickly oh, say there is actually a an open discussion on the new page patrol top page about expanding the draft period to 24 hours. Yeah, okay. so it's, it's, it's great. Yeah.